going on? Welcome to another episode of Allen AF. That's Allen AF. You know what it stands for. Um, this episode, man, I was thinking about this. Uh, you remember that lady, the white lady who was um, in a NAACP? Rachel, oh, I want to, what's her last name? Dalazar or something like that. Well, anyway, I was thinking about this lady the other day and how she lived as a, as a black woman. She was white. She lived as a black woman. She did everything as a black woman. Uh, her skin was tan. I don't know what she tan or not. Her hairstyles were black, she was curly hairstyles. You know, I think she even wore like a, a, a afro. She had a black natural woman's hairstyle. I think she identified as, a, you know, black but mixed or whatever, whatever she identified as. She had two black children. Uh, she was, you know, raising them as black men. She was educated in the black struggle. She uh, was fighting white supremacy. She was the head of uh, a president, I believe, of NAACP. She was doing big, big things, big black things she was doing. She was. And um, I mean, this, she was, you know, throwing seminars and giving speeches and, and moving the needle as a black woman, right? And we found out she was white. And everybody dismissed her. Called her crazy. Shut it down. Get your crazy white ass out of here. We don't want to deal with that. This crazy. She crazy as hell. We dismissed her, right? And uh, I was thinking about this the other day. That she identified as a black woman. And we dismissed her. But when a trans person identifies as something else, we call them a hero. That was, you know, I, you know, women just be, it, it, it's a, they have a bud like person right now, bud like transgender person. They put them on a beer can and they said that she was a wonderful woman. She'd been a woman for I don't know how long. I don't even think it's been a year. Maybe it's been a year. Who knows? But she wasn't born one, and now she's a woman, and they put her on a bud can. They put her on a bud light can. Uh, not all of these women, they could have celebrated, you know. All of these wonderful women walking around, dead or alive, they could have celebrated. Rose Parks, Michelle Obama, um, anybody, they could have celebrated. All kind of women walking around, not even black, everybody. They could have celebrated. It's so many wonderful Amazing women that done some wonderful things, but they put this trans person on a beer bottle. Fine. Okay. And they called her a woman. Like Bruce Jenner, they said that he was woman of the year. She was woman of the year after being a woman for one year. She was, <laughs> she was woman of the year. Um, so that's brave to transition genders, but you can't transition in race. And I was thinking, why? First of all, I wanted a disclaimer. I don't have no problem with transgender people at all. Not at all. You know, transgender people, whatever. Uh, I, I'm black. I hate discrimination of any kind. I, I think everybody in this country should be treated like a white man. Period. I do. And, I, you know, I. Um, with that being said, I will acknowledge any trans person by any, trans, by any pronoun they choose it. I will call them whatever, you know, they choose, whatever. Fine. No issue with transgender people. Not at all. Uh, but I was just wondering how we can transition genders but not race. That, that was confusing to me. And then I was thinking because when you, transgen when you transition genders, you just go from male to female to female to male. And there's little benefit, you know, um, Little benefit. You have, let me turn this down, man. I didn't know that I had the thing on. Do not disturb, okay. Little benefit. Yeah, there's benefits for being a, um, there's benefits you get from being a woman. You know, the door, you somebody open the door for you, hold the elevator for you. You know, everybody wanna have sex with you. Um, you get free drinks to the club, at the bar. 
all kind of, you know, stuff like that. That's a lot of benefits for being a man. You know, promotions, you get paid more as a man. Um, you get taken seriously in business meetings, in life. When you go to the mechanic, you just show up as a man. They don't try to get you as bad as they would a woman. Yes, yes, there's benefits, countless benefits for being a man. You know, and I'm pretty sure that, I mean, there's not as many benefits for being a woman, but there's a lot of benefits for being a woman. So trans transitioning over from gender to gender is acceptable. But race, though, when you, trans you transition over from race, they can't have that happen because those benefits outweigh, um, you know, a lot of problems will disappear because I'm black. I'm a black male. And if I identified as a white male, well, wow, those, I mean, I get white privilege. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, and all, all kind of things like my entire life would change and uh, with dealing with the police, I get the benefit of the doubt. Medicine, dealing with the doctors, you know, I can get the you know uh, the proper prescriptions. I can get medicine. They're not thinking I'm a drug addict, and I'm thinking I'm just complaining. I'm not in pain. I can get medicine, you know, because uh, you know black women they 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 die four times as much as white women giving birth because they they don't listen to black women in a in a um. Why they de delivering babies? Because they think, you know, we're drug addicts. We're not really in pain. We can tolerate pain. That's what they think. So, uh, you know, medical field, things will, you know, be different. I get the benefit of the um, doubt when it comes to the law, when it comes to housing, when it comes to schooling. My whole life would change. If I can transition race, my whole life would change. And, you know, in the, the, um, if we can do that, the the censor would be 90% of white people just for the benefits, you know, just for the benefits. 90% white people would be in the censor just for the everybody would tra Everybody would transition over for that benefit. So you can't, transi can't transition race, but you can gender. I, f I believe that's the only reason why. Because there's a lot of people, I've met some black people who identify as white. I've met some black people who can't stand other black people, but they love them some white people. They talk white, act white. You know, when I say talk white, I'm, I'm not saying proper. I'm saying they kind of, they uptight. No coolness in them at all. I know a lot of, you know, prominent black people who speak proper English, but they have a little, it's a little swag in them. You know, like you take Barack Obama, how cool he is. See, that's, it's just innate. It's just, the, the you know, the, the black people. We just, you know, we got style. We're cool. We're just different. So when I say, when I say he speaks white, you know, like he says, he actually says things like cool beans. And, um, you know, for Pete's sakes, he actually said th says things like this. And that's what I mean by speaking white. So I know I know black people who cannot stand other black people. They identify as white. They do everything as a white person does. They you they you know um, they they don't use seasoning. Um, they they walk with their butt cheeks tight. You know they just they you know they don't listen to no black music and you know they just identify as black as white. You know and I know some white people who identify as black. They. Don't talk to their white families no more. They tatted up, hip hop, this. They know more rap than I know. They hit me up with the latest rap version of this and that. They tell me when somebody's coming out with a new album. They put me up on rappers who are black. Um, their views. They they know more about police incidents than I know about. Um they yeah, you know, like I said, their views, their everything about them is black. They identify as black. They only date out there outside of their race. Um, you know, the way they eat, how they wear their clothes. Everything about them is black. And that's how they identify. So, but you cannot transition over, you know, 
Like you can't, the police can't pull you over. And I'm black, but I'm like, hey, dude, I identify as a white man, so you gotta gotta treat me right now. That cannot happen. And you can't, you know, you can't say, well, it's about how you look, because a lot of people who transition over genders, they still look like a man in a dress. I've seen them. They still got big hands, big knuckles. Not all of them, a lot of them. You know, maybe they haven't saved up for the operation or whatever, or the hormones that they have to take, but they just look like a dude in a dress. I've seen some women who transition over to men and they look like a cute chick with a mustache. You know, I could still see some, the female in them, you know? So it's not that. It's the it's the perks, the benefits, you know, because Rachel, the NAACP lady, she looked like a black woman. She does. She looked just like a black woman. And I think her parents called her out, you know, because she hated white supremacy. She was actually good for the cause. I, I personally believe we should have let her be. I, you know, I should. I, I personally believe we should have just let her do what she was doing. She was fighting for her black kids. She has black kids. Her kids was just as black as my kids. And I mean, it was half black, but they black. This is America. They black. Her kids just as black as my kids. You know, in the eyes of America, laws. And so they should have the same benefits that you know, what she was fighting for, because she had the inside scoop. She knew how both sides felt. And she knew how both sides moved. And she was doing things. I mean. Uh, I, I, I wish she just would have been like, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm a white lady. And um, I want to help. Or maybe that wouldn't have worked. Maybe she had to have acted like a black lady to do the things that she did. Maybe she couldn't have been the president of NAACP if she was white. Who knows? But I believe that she shouldn't have been shunned like that. She shouldn't have been just dismissed as crazy. Because we don't dismiss anyone who transitioned over to something else as crazy. They're brave. You know? We do that. It's weird because somebody told me that they have an uncle who has multiple personalities. And people call him crazy. He identifies as different people, you know, people call him crazy. They're considered crazy, schizophrenic or whatever. Now, I don't want to say nothing about, like I said, I'm pro everybody. Whatever you want to do, however you want to live your life, cool. If you, long as you're not hurting no one. And Rachel wasn't hurting anyone. She was actually helping. So I don't understand why we had to, you know. I guess because, I mean, I get the I get being upset about it because you know you can't just jump into our skin and jump out of our skin when it's convenient because we have a plight that you have to understand that you have to be a part of. You can't just jump back and forth when it's necessary for you. So I get why people was upset and they felt betrayed and lied to because in essence she was a real she's a real white woman but mentally she was black that's how she felt at least like she was black but I mean you know what I'm saying if she would have just said hey listen okay I lied I'm white but I'm trying to help and the only way I thought I could help you know, I identify as being black, but I really, really, really want to help. So please allow me to help. I don't know how it would have worked, man. It's a tricky situation. But just like being a transgender, it's a tricky situation, too. People identify as something else. Now, I used to work at this middle school, and it was this little girl who, cute little girl. And she came to school one day, and she didn't want to be who she was no more. She said her name was Ryan. And the whole school system had to call her Ryan. Her teachers had to call her Ryan. 
Her counselors had to call her Ryan. The students called her Ryan. If you called her by her real name, you would get in trouble. She was 12. And she made that decision that she was someone else. And everyone had to call her by the name that she chose to be. Now, see, that right there to me is ridiculous because a 12 year old can make decisions like this in their life. She can't even vote. She can't. She's not old enough to drink liquor. She is not old enough to smoke a cigarette. She's not even old enough to own a credit card. She's not. She's not old enough uh, in her name. She's not old enough to own a credit card in her name. She, she's not old enough to even <sighs> order a pizza. You know, now maybe she is. You know, maybe she is old enough to order a pizza. Who knows? But rent a car. She's not old enough to rent a car. What I'm saying is she's a minor. She is a minor. And no one... No one listens to a minor when it comes to important matters. I don't care what minors think. What minors think when it comes to something important. I don't care. You know, I'm not, I'm not asking a 12 year old, who should I vote for in the election? I'm not asking a 12 year old anything. I, I'm not. When my son turns 12, I'm not even going to ask him what he wants for dinner. I'm just going to cook whatever I cook and he's going to eat whatever I make. His opinion is nothing to me. I do not, uh, I do not um, value the opinion of a child. I don't. So why are we allowing kids to identify as something else, how they ever feel? Okay, if, oh, 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 I forgot to tell you this before I say anything. The school never asked the parents, is it okay if we call your child Ryan? The school never asked the parent. That's what I had a problem with. That right there. Now, if the parent knew, and it's like, yeah, man, my, my, so my daughter, she wants to be called Ryan. Cool. All right. She ain't getting the sex change. She ain't taking no hormones. Cool. She's 12. We can call her whatever y'all want us to call her. That's fine if the parents know and the parents agree. If I found out that my school was calling my son another name and I didn't know it, I would be pissed. I would be pissed. And then if I found out, that, you know, why I didn't tell me because we're not liable. We're not, you know, we don't have to tell you. I would be upset. Because you're not about to leave my house and live, in a, live, you know, a lie or live your truth without me knowing. You're a child. You're a minor. You can't leave the school by yourself. But you want me to. The, yeah, a child, a 12-year-old, the 12-year-old girl or boy, whatever she feels like, she cannot check herself out of school early and go to the dentist. If her parents pulled up in the car outside to pick her up from school, they can't text her and say, hey, we outside and she can walk outside to school. No, they have to get out the car and sign her out. If you have to sign her out of school, then how can she say that she is a boy instead of a girl and you go along with it? That's all I'm saying. Why are we allowing certain people? To identify as something and we can accept it, but we don't allow other people to identify as something else. And we say they are crazy. Why? If I went out today and um, I don't answer to Alan anymore or AC, they call me AC, they call me Alan or Alan Cunningham. If I chose not to answer to any of those names because I felt like a Bob. And I'm walking around. People are like, hey, what's up, Alan? What's up? And I'm just ignoring them. And my name is Bob. They'd be like, excuse me? Dude, I am Bob. I, I don't know who this Alan person is you're speaking to, but I am Bob. And I would appreciate it if you called me Bob. They would lock me up. My friends and family will call the crazy house and lock me up. They would. They not just going to be like, oh. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Cool, Bob. Okay, Bob. Hey, Bob, you want to go shoot some pool? 
Hey, Bob, you hungry? They ain't going to just, you know, and then a year later, they're going to be like, hey, man, we put Bob on this Bud Light can because you brave. Because you you don't identify as Alan no more. You identify as Bob. And we like that because he's brave. He's no longer Alan. He's Bob. No. They will put me on medication. They would literally put me on medication. You know? They wouldn't just accept that and tell that and roll with the punches. But why? Why not? They would if I wanted to be Erica. If I wanted to be Erica, they'd just be like, oh damn, he's Erica now. I mean, well, she. She's Erica now. And let it be. This is uh, this is weird, man. Weird. This is weird. Oh, I lied. I said I don't have any problem with the transgender community. I have one. One issue. One. Um, whatever you identify as, fine. Do you. Go live that life as that person you identify as. Cool. The only issue I have is um, if you are, the you know, when you compete in the sports, do not be born male and you trans transition over to a female and are you competing with people who was born female? Don't do that. That is not fair. That is not fair. I don't care what nobody says because I have a daughter and my daughter let's say she played basketball and she practiced her butt off and she was good at basketball and then you come over here after you didn't transitioned and now you want to you know play against my daughter no matter how good my daughter is you're probably better you're stronger you're faster you're bigger your hands are bigger your lungs are bigger you know um your feet are bigger. You can do things. You can overpower my daughter. You're more. It's unfair. Because now my daughter can't start anymore. If she's on your team, she can't start anymore as a point guard. If you want to be the point guard, she can't start anymore. Whatever position she's in, because you want to be in that position. And you can't say, well, if another girl came in who was better than your daughter, but let's say my daughter was the best. Let's say my daughter was the best girl in the country at that position. And you came in and you were number 25. You was the 25 male in your position, but you transitioned over to a female. So you're number one now. You are number one now and that's unfair because you ruined this girl's dream because you wanted to compete with girls now i don't know that they need to get it i don't know the answer do they need to get a transition do they need to get a transgender lead or do you still play with boys or men i don't know the answer to that but i do know that you shouldn't be able to play with with women if you if you are if you was born a male just like there's no women there's no you know people who were born female transitioning over to male and now they want to be in the UFC you know what i'm saying there's no people who was born female and not a male and want to be a they want to fight Mayweather that's not happening because you know why that's not happening because that's unfair that's why that's not happening it's not happening because it's unfair because it doesn't benefit that trans that transgender person to fight Mayweather or to be in the UFC it's no benefit at all because you will get your ass severely kicked but it's a benefit the other way around. It's a benefit to go in as a girl now, but you was born male. It's a benefit. Yeah, I can go in there and kick everybody's ass now. 
Yes, it's a benefit. If it, if it was a if it was a man, come on, man. If it was boxers, female boxers my age, same age group, same weight class as me, but it was all female boxers, I would beat the shit out of everybody. You could put, you could put multiple women in the ring with me, and I would beat the dog out of them. Multiple, multiple people in the ring with me, and I will win. I will win. It's not fair. That's all I'm saying. It's not fair, dude. It's not fair. But that's all. I, that's the only issue I have. Other than that, cool. I mean, hey, how about you take sports out and compete with something else? Compete with, you know, typing. Let a transgender man or transgender woman, you know, type with other women. Or cook. Have a cook-off. Anything that doesn't require strength. You know? Think. Read. Have a reading contest. Do a math problem. Anything else. That doesn't, you know, that strength don't have anything to do with. Or running or, you know what I'm saying? Any of that stuff don't have nothing to do with. Do a Rubik's Cube contest. Cool. But not sports. That's all I'm saying. Not sports. Now, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get a lot of emails about this one. I am. Because people are just, I understand, look, equality. People want to be treated fairly. I get that. But that's, do you understand that's not being fair to people who's born female? That's not being fair to people who's born female. It is not being fair to people who's born female. You know, Bruce Jenner being... Woman of the year was a slap in the face to every woman who has been putting in work their whole lives. They are single mothers who take care of multiple children. They the mother and the father. They get up in the morning. They get their child ready. You know, some women, some of them drop the kids off at daycare or take them to school. Some of them don't have a car. They have to catch a bus with their kid or walk with them miles to go where they've got they gotta go. Then they go to school or work. They make it happen. Then they pick their kids up and, you know, any kind of way they have to. They pick their kids up. They bring them home. They cook for them. They clean them. They give them a bath. They live their whole life every day struggling as a woman or as a mother or a single mother or whatever they doing. And they didn't win female of the year. But this damn Bruce Jenner, who's rich, switched over and he won female of the year didn't do nothing what did he do as a female what did he do as a female did he won that did he give birth no because he can't did he um cure cancer as when he returned to female no because he's not a doctor he does he's not equipped to do any of these things he just started wearing a dress. That's it. That's all he did. He didn't he didn't even make he didn't even accomplish more than Rachel as a black woman. Now if they would have given it to her, I would have been like, oh, okay, they'd have put her on the bud light. That would have made more sense. It would have made more sense, man. <sighs> Look, you may not agree with what I'm saying, and that's fine. You may not like what I'm saying, and that's cool. I remember when that used to be fine because this is America. I can say things that you don't like, and that's, and you know, I can do things that you don't like, but I'm not hurting no one, so that's fine. But this is my show and it's Alan AF and these are my thoughts and this is how I feel because I'm being Alan AF. Mm. 
It's messed up, man. We to the point we can't even tell our truths anymore. You know what I'm saying? We can't speak our truth because if I speak my truth, I am not brave. I'm an idiot. If I, t if I speak what's on my mind, you know, put myself out there. People could come and take my show, mess up my shows. I can't feed my family no more. People can actually do that. They can actually do that. But if I cut my dick off and identify something else, then I'm brave. It's weird. And I'm not shitting on people who, who transition over. I promise you I'm not. I'm a comedian. I know comedians who are who transgendered over, who, who, who switched their um, genders. And we're cool. I, you know, like I said, I, only, I, I told you the only problem I had with, you know, the transgender community. I told you that was the only thing I have. And I told you again, I'm black. I don't discriminate with no one. But things should be even across the board. Things should be even across the board. If I'm brave for being a transgender, then let me be brave for being transracial and speaking my mind. Let me be brave for every decision I make that's better in my life. Let me be brave. That's all I'm saying. Look at here, man. Uh, it's been another episode of Allen AF. You know, where I give it to you raw and then cut. I um, have some shows coming up, man. Go to my Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. I got a lot of funny videos on Instagram, man. Um, I just surprised. We just surprised my mother at her 80th birthday party. It was um, it was tricky because you know she turned 80 years old and. You don't want to have a surprise birthday party for somebody that old yelling surprise in their face. You know what I'm saying? Because they can surprise you. And you don't want that. You don't want that. So when she came in the room, everybody, well, it was a big hall. And she walked into the hall. We made it so everybody was sitting in their chairs way back away from her. And when she walked in, everybody was like, surprise. Hey. And she stood there. And it registered to her that that's her sisters and brothers and family that lives out of town. People came from all over the country to surprise my mother. And I came from, I, I flew in from California. It was in Detroit to surprise my mother. And she cried. Oh, man, it was beautiful. She cried. She shed so many tears, you know. And then she laughed. And we ate. We danced. I did a comedy show. People went up and spoke about, you know, what, what my mother meant to them. And, uh, you know, even when my daughter spoke and almost brought me to tears. How, you know, what my mother meant to her. And to give somebody their flowers while they still here. Give people their flowers while they still here, man. That's important. Give them their flowers while they still here. You know, because my mother, that's my hero. She is. She put the whole family on. You know, my father, he wasn't a good husband or a good father. Let let it, you know, you know, seriously, he wasn't. And my mother uh, put the family on her back, went back to college, got a degree, got us out the slums, and made us a better man. And I love her to death for that. My mother did that, not my father. Um, she's brave. She should have been woman of the year. She's brave. She had four boys and she turned us into four men. And she's proud of all of us and I'm proud of her. Yes, she should have been on a bud like Cam. <laughs> Look, um, thank y'all for listening to another episode of Allen AF, man. Um, go to my Instagram or Facebook or YouTube or TikTok or go to go, go to all of them actually, and 
subscribe, follow me there. I got some shows coming up. Um, so go go to those sites, man. You can laugh at a lot of my stand up clips. You know, just laugh at a lot of my. St- I got a lot of them, man. You trust me. You watch some, you gonna laugh. I don't give a damn if you a hater. You can sit right there and be like, man, look at his shirt. Look at it. I can't believe he wore that on stage. Look at it. You're going to laugh. If you listen, you're going to laugh. All right? So, you can see when I'm coming to your city, man. And you can buy tickets to when I come to your city and we can kick it. You know, I appreciate y'all listening to my podcast, man. I really appreciate y'all listening to my podcast. And I promise you I'm going to have guests. A lot of people have been asking me when can they come on. And they will come on really soon. I promise you. I promise you. I've just been busy. I just got back from out of town. I'm getting ready to do another uh, show. To, to <sighs> I'm ready to do some shows. I'm at the Long Beach Laugh Factory soon. I think this weekend. Um, yeah. Follow me on so- social media so you can find out where I am. So you can come see the show. Um, DM me if you want some free tickets to my show. I got you. If I can, I got you. I got you. I got you. So it's, my Instagram and all my social media is really easy. It is I am Allen AF. I am Allen AF. And you already know how to spell Allen. It's A L L A N. Keep listening to my podcast, man. Subscribe to my podcast. I appreciate those who've donated money to my podcast. Um, subscribe to my YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. You know what I'm trying to say. You know what I'm trying to say. Uh, I, I need to eat. I'm hungry. Thank you all for listening, man. I really love you all. And if people who you have people in your life that's alive, give them their flowers before it's too late.